Hello everyone, now let us discuss about the muscles of head that produce facial expressions. Now, muscles of facial expression which provide us with the ability to express a wide variety of emotions lie within the subcutaneous layer. They usually originate in the fascia or bones of the skull and insert into the skin. Because of their insertions, the muscles of facial expressions move the skin rather than the joint. Remember this, because of their insertions, the muscles of the facial expression move the skin rather than the joint when they contract. Among the noteworthy muscles in this group are those surrounding the orifices, that is the openings of the head, such as eyes, nose and mouth. These muscles function as sphincters. These muscles function as sphincters which close the orifices and dilators which dilate or open the orifices. For example, the orbicularis oculi muscle closes the eye and the levator palpebra superior muscle opens it. Orbicularis oculi muscle closes the eye whereas the levator palpebra superioris it opens it. The next example is occipitofrontalis. The occipitofrontalis is an unusual muscle in this group because it is made up of two parts. Occipitofrontalis is made up of two parts, an anterior part called as frontal belly, that is frontalis, which is superficial to the frontal bone, and a posterior part called as occipital belly. Occipital frontalis, it has two parts anterior part called as frontal belly and the posterior part is called as occipital belly which is superficial to the occipital bone. The two muscular portions are held together by strong aponeurosis. It is a sheet like tendon. Aponeurosis, the epicranial aponeurosis also called as galea aponeurotica that covers the superior and lateral surfaces of the skull. The next is buccinator muscle. It forms the major muscular portion of the cheek. The buccinator muscle forms the major muscular portion of the cheek. And the duct of the parotid gland, which is a salivary gland, passes through the buccinator muscle to reach the oral cavity. The buccinator muscle is so named because it compresses the cheeks. Buck, B-U-C-C -C means cheek, hence the name buccinator. It compresses the cheeks during blowing. For example, when a musician plays a brass instrument such as trimfit, it functions in whistling. The buccinator muscle, it functions in whistling, blowing, sucking and it assists in chewing. Here you can see these are the various muscles. This is the galea aponeurotica and this is the temporalis muscle. This is the occipitalis and this one is the masseter muscle and this one is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. This one is levator scapulae and if you can see here this is the frontalis. And this one is the occipitalis. The next is corrugator supercilii. And this one is the orbi uh, orbicularis oculi. This is nasalis. And this one here the is the levator labi superialis. And this one is the zygo zygomaticus minor. Sorry, this is zygomaticus major and this one, the two horizontal line. This is zygomaticus major and this is zygomaticus minor. And this one is orbicularis oris. And here you can find this part. This is the buccinator muscle and this one is the depressor anguli oris. 
and this one is the depressor labi inferialis and this one is the mentalis near the chin and here this part is the risorius. Now let us discuss about the each muscle of which govern the facial expressions. And here the muscles are arranged in two groups. The muscles that act on the mouth and muscles that act on the eyes. Here you can see the first you can find the muscle origin, insertion, action and innervation. That is which nerve innervates that particular muscle is also discussed here. Coming to the first, we will be discussing about scalp muscles. The first one is occipitofrontalis. As we have discussed earlier, it is divided into two portions. Frontal belly and occipital belly. Occipitofrontalis is divided into frontal belly and occipital belly. Origin. The frontal belly originates at epicranial aponeurosis. Whereas occipital belly originates at occipital bone and mastoid process of the temporal bone. And it inserts at skin superior to supraorbital margin. Frontal belly, it inserts at skin superior to supraorbital margin. Whereas occipital belly, it inserts at epicranial aponeurosis. If you see here, Frontal belly originates at epicranial aponeurosis, whereas the occipital belly, it inserts at epicranial aponeurosis. Action of frontal belly is it draws the scalp anteriorly, rises the eyebrow and wrinkles the skin of forehead horizontally as in the look of a surprise. Innervation. Frontal belly is majorly innervated by facial nerve, that is the seventh nerve. And Function of occipital belly draws the scalp posterior. Frontal belly draws the scalp anteriorly, whereas the occipital belly draws the scalp posterior. It is also innervated by facial nerve. That is seventh nerve. Now coming to muscles of mouth. The first one is orbicularis oris. Oris means of the mouth. Or means circular. Orbicularis oris. Coming to the origin, the muscle fibers surrounding opening of the mouth. It originates at muscle fibers surrounding the opening of the mouth. It gets inserted in the skin at corner of the mouth. The action is it closes, protrudes lips and compresses the lips against teeth and shapes the lips during the speech. Orbicularis oris, it closes and protrudes the lips. It compresses the lips against the teeth and shapes the lips during the speech. And all the muscles majorly are innervated by facial nerve only. The next is zygomaticus major. Zygomatic is nothing but cheekbone. Major means greater. So origin is, as the name indicates, it originates at zygomatic bone. Zygomaticus major, it originates at zygomatic bone and it inserts at the skin at an angle of mouth and orbicularis oris. The action is it draws the angle of the mouth superiorly and laterally as in smiling. So the muscle that is aiding in the smiling is zygomaticus major and the muscle that governs the lips is orbicularis oris. The next is zygomaticus minor. It, is also it also originates at zygomatic bone and it inserts at upper lip. Zygomaticus minor, it rises or elevates the upper lip, exposing the maxillary teeth. Zygomaticus minor, it elevates the upper lip. It is also innovated by facial nerve. The next muscle is levator labi superialis. Levator means it raises or elevates. And labi means related to lips. And superior, superioris is upper. Levator labi superioris. Originated superior to infraorbital foramen of maxillae. The levator labi superioris, it originates at superior to the infraorbital foramen of maxilla. And it inserts at the skin at angle of mouth and orbicularis oris. 
action it it raises the upper lip the levator lab is superioris it raises the upper lip innervation is by facial nerve only the next is depressa labi inferior inferioris as the name depressa means it lowers or depresses inferior inferioris is also lower and the site of origin of depressa labi inferioris is mandible and it inserts at the skin of lower lip depressor labi inferioris it depresses the lower lip whereas levator labi superioris it raises the upper lip depressor labi inferioris it depresses the lower lip it is also innervated by facial nerve the next is depressor anguli oris oris means mouth it also originates at mandible depressor anguli oris originates at mandible and it inserts at an angle of mouth the major action of depressor anguli oris is it draws angle of the mouth angle means anguli means angle oris means mouth so it draws the angle of the mouth laterally and inferiorly as in the opening of the mouth the muscle that is governing the opening of the mouth is depressor anguli oris it is also innervated by facial nerve next is levator anguli oris levator means it rises uh, coming to the site of origin inferior to infra orbital foramen and the insertion is at the skin of lower lip and orbicularis oris the major action is it draws the angle of mouth laterally and superior it is also innervated by facial nerve the next muscle is buccinator buck means cheek and the origin is alveolar processes of maxillae and mandible and petrigo mandi bula raphe that is a fibrous band extending from petrigoid process of sphenoid bone to mandible that is the site of origin of buccinator muscle and insertion it inserts at orbicularis oris the action of buccinator muscle is it presses the cheeks against the teeth and lips as in whistling blowing and sucking and draws corner of the mouth laterally and assists in mastication chewing by keeping the food between the teeth and not between the teeth and cheeks buccinator muscle it mainly aids in the mastication it is also innervated by innervated by facial nerve the next is risorius risor means laughter r i s o r risor means laughter origin is fascia over parotid gland and insertion is at the skin at an angle of mouth action of risorius is draws angle of the mouth laterally as in grimacing it is also innervated by facial nerve the next is mentalis mental means chin remember this mental means chin mentalis the site of origin of mentalis is mandible and the insertion is at skin of uh, skin of chin coming to the action of mentalis it elevates and protrudes the lower lip and pulls skin of the chin up as in pouting it elevates and protrudes lower lip and pulls the skin of the chin up as in pouting it is also innervated by facial nerve next coming to neck muscles the first one is platysma as we know platys means flat or broad the origin is at fascia over deltoid and pectoralis major muscles and insertion is at mandible and it blends with the muscle around the angle of the mouth and skin of the lower face coming to the major action it draws outer part of lower lip inferiorly and posteriorly as in pouting and depresses the mandible the muscle that depresses the mandible is platysma and it is also innervated by facial nerve next muscles of orbit and eyebrow muscles the first one is orbicularis oculi oculi means eye origin is at the medial wall of orbit and insertion is at circular path around the orbit 
action is it closes the eye. Orbicularis oculi, it closes the eye. It is also innervated by facial nerve. The next is corrugator super cilia. Corrugator super cilia. Corrugat is to wrinkle. Corrugat is to wrinkle and super cilia means eyebrow. As the name, it draws the eyebrows inferiorly and wrinkles the skin of forehead vertically as in frowning. Corrugator super silly. Corrugat means to wrinkle. It wrinkles the skin of the forehead. In simple terms, corrugator super silly, it wrinkles the forehead. The origin is medial end of superior, superior arch of frontal bone and insertion is at skin of eyebrow. It is also innervated by facial nerve. Now here you can see these are the various muscles. This is the frontal bone and this is the frontal belly part of the occipitofrontalis. And this is the temporalis muscle and this circular muscle which aids in closing the eyes that is orbicularis oculi. And this one is the levator labi superioris. And this one is the zygomaticus minor and this one is the zygomaticus major and this is the visorius and these two this is the platysma it depresses the mandible the next is this one depressor anguli oris related to mouth no depressor anguli oris and this is the dip depressor Labi inferioris. If you can see here, this one is the corrugator supercilia. It wrinkles the forehead. The corrugator supercilia it aids in the corrugator means to wrinkle. Supercilia is eyebrow. The corrugator supercilia wrinkles the forehead. Major functions. And this one is the levator palpebra superioris. It helps in opening of the eye. Levator palpebra. Palpebra means eyelid. Levator palpebra superioris. Levator means to rise. So, levator palpebra superioris means it helps in the opening of the eye. And this one is the lacrimal gland. And this is the zygomatic bone. And this muscle is the buccinator muscle. And this one is the masseter and this one is the orbicularis oris and here this is the mandible and this bone is mentalis. One important point is when the facial muscles contract, when they contract the muscles of facial expression move the skin rather than the joint. This is an important point to remember. When they contract the muscles of the facial expression move the skin rather than the joint. This is the right lateral superior view. Here also you can find the various muscles. One of the important pathological condition that is related to facial muscles is Bell's palsy. Palsy means as we have discussed earlier it is paralysis. So Bell's palsy is also known as facial paralysis is a unilateral paralysis of the muscles of the facial expression. Bell's palsy is due to the damage or disease of facial nerve. That is seventh nerve, facial nerve. And possible causes include inflammation of the facial nerve due to an ear infection, ear surgery that damages the facial nerve or infection by herpes simplex virus. The paralysis causes the entire side of the face to droop in severe cases and the person cannot wrinkle the forehead, close the eyes or plunker the lips on the affected side. Drooling and difficulty in swallowing also occurs. 80% of the patients recover completely within few weeks to few months. For others, paralysis is permanent. And the symptoms of Bell's palsy mimic those that of a stroke. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for further videos on medical coding and CPC training.